Hi all, I have another amazing inner chest nutshell game to show you. Back in the day of 1846, it was the Battle of Wits according to Chess Gamescom. That was the witty pun for the game because it was Daniel Harwitz against Bernard Horwitz. <laughs> so the Battle of Wits. Now Daniel Harwitz uh, was one of the best players actually during the 1850s. He was among the top three or four players in the world. He played actually matches against Staunton. Bernard Horwitz, the opponent here, Adolf Anderson, uh, and others. So it's a great clash here. Uh, Horwitz uh, was uh, part of a group of chess players known as the uh, Playads, and a group of seven really strong players that, uh, for the time that, that discussed things. And he was more famous actually for ch the chess problem world. So his true love of problems, uh, he wrote the classic book of. Um, chess studies and he was winner of the first study composing tournament in 1862 so the battle of wits here let's have a look e4 from daniel harwitz <laughs> e5 we have knight f3 knight c6 now c3 so this this was quite a popular idea at the time just to and so there's the day just to construct the center g6 you might think that's quite a modern invention the fincetto here bishop c4 d6 d4 Bishop g7, white castles, knight g e7. So that leaves the f pawn uh, to roll forward later, especially when this pawn is not pinned. White closes the center, so it's got a king's engine defense fill to the position, which is amazing because you know the king's engine defense came later as, as an opening. But here, so white's got the space advantage. Um, the you know structurally. It's desirable in the king's engine to have this pawn undermining this pawn chain. Bishop's in the way at the moment. But um, we have an unusual looking move here after knight b8. We have knight h4. Uh, it sets itself up almost as a target, but it's, it's not working here. Knight takes is not working because just queen takes on f7. Uh, so black just ignores that pesky knight with castling. And it's protected now. Bishop h3. And the knight goes to g2. So what's actually being accomplished here? Well, the rook is able to stay on f1 because of this knight g2 blocking. And that means, actually, basically white has liberated the f-pawn. It can go to f3. Maybe the, the rook can go to f2 later if needed for a defensive posture. And in fact, you know that is ready to meet now, f5 with f3. So it looks like a reasonable defensive posture, knight d7. And this looks like a safeguarding move, bishop g5, because it's got an intention to safeguard the pawn chain here by giving itself up on f6. So voluntarily giving up the bishop here. But it kind of strengthens that e4 without the, the pressure of the knight. Knight d2. So white's strengthening his position. Queen d7, queen b3. Now b6 potentially creates some light square weaknesses. Rook f2, white is... Uh, having a defensive posture over here against black doubling rooks so all the rooks now on the f file battle of wits on the f file uh, bishop takes g2 this might be a little bit dodgy because you can see a lot of black's pawns are on dark square so there's corresponding light square weaknesses in the position so fundamentally it might be a little bit suspect especially after f4 uh, losing the light square bishop is often considered uh, very bad in the king's in, as a generalization. But at the moment, this bishop doesn't seem to, it needs to get onto this diagonal ideally. So, how will it do that? We have bishop b5, queen c8, and now queen a4. And in fact, there's a double attack on a7 and to get the bishop potentially onto this key diagonal. Defending, not there, defending these uh, light squares. And also e6 could be good. First black uh, takes on g3 and then defends his a pawn but allows bishop d7. So now white is really tapping into these light square weaknesses. This looks like a king's engine defense gone wrong. Um, white plays c4 and you can imagine <laughs> you know maybe his long long-term plan is is like the king's engine plan. but actually um, okay that's some way off pat c4 almost like represents that bishop h6 we have now queen uh, coming to d1 to lend support to the position 
And now this is used as a tactical liability with knight c6, clever move. So the rooks on e6 if takes. And the knight seems to be coming to what is now a kind of Achilles heel of the position. So that was one downside of playing c4, like the d4 square had, had been weakened. And black is really tapping into that. After rook h1 though, there is a bit of pressure down this h file. We have bishop e3 trying to keep the bishop on that uh, on the board and also this diagonal could be very useful. The rook retreats. Now really uh, black's slightly better here and should probably play knight d4 but maybe got excited by the prospect of putting loads of pressure on f3 and actually gave up his light, his, sorry, his dark square bishop. And after queen takes he plays now knight d4 which clearly there's a pressure and also e6 is hit. Um, maybe he was expecting bishop g4 in which case black's better after king g8 with the threat of h5 trying to hit f3. There's good coordination on f3 here but but white played a much much stronger move in this position. Can you guess if I give you five seconds to pause the video what would you play with white here? So starting from now white play. Okay yeah a very clinical forcing a rook takes h7 lovely rook sack brilliant for the time 1846 brilliant there's hardly any responses there's only one like move here then we have rook h1 check so by chipping away black's uh, crucial h pawn after king g7 it's actually checkmate yeah uh, <laughs> it's it, it was almost as if the combination was forced by white he didn't really want to play bishop g4 so he was forced to look for something maybe better and and the game did play out literally to checkmate they did do that at the time so a very very sweet finish a very very interesting game because it has like characteristics of a king's engine defense uh, which is one of my favorite openings often with black um but uh yeah black was holding the balance until i believe he gave up the dark square bishop uh, it, it seemed a little bit lucrative to, to put pressure on f3 but it did carry some downsides weakening, weakening those dark squares that h file proved fatal i hope you got something from this game some of these games are actually quite instructive positionally and tactically of course comments questions likes appreciated thanks very much